We use cotton every day. Clothes, towels, sheets, money, animal feed. Yeah, cooking oil. Compost. All these things and more use cotton. Before you can use it, you have to grow it. Let's see how it's planted. We are near Cloud Chief, Oklahoma, on 193 acres of Washington River bottomland. Bottomland makes good farmland because when the river floods, the land gets restored with good soil and nutrients. It also tends to get more moisture, which plants usually need in the hot summer months. This is Mr. Court. He is a friend of my dad, and he is teaching us about planting cotton. This is the planter setup we are using. There is a John Deere tractor. It pulls a 16-row planter. Behind the planter is a tanker carrying liquid fertilizer. This is over $300,000 of equipment. Farming is not cheap, guys. There is a lot going on here. Let's look at some of it. This hopper holds the planting seed. This is what the seed looks like. It is coated with a treatment which helps protect it from fungus and pests and improves vigor. Each bag weighs a little over 50 pounds and holds about 230,000 seeds. A bag of seeds costs about $400. We'll be planting 30,000 seeds per acre in this field. So that's a little over $50 per acre just for the seed. To plant all 193 acres, We'll need a little more than 25 bags or $10,000 in seed. Not only is farming not cheap, there is a lot of math. Let's take a closer look at the planter. From the main seed hopper, this fan blows the seed to the smaller hoppers in the planting station for each row. Another fan pulls a vacuum on the seeds, sucking them into the cells. This puts one seed in each cell in this wheel shown without the cover. Combined with the control system, this gives very precise control over seed spacing. Having control down to a single seed not only reduces waste, it also allows the spacing to be optimized for land conditions and keeps plants from crowding each other and competing for resources. These planting rows are spaced 30 inches apart. Court prefers this spacing over the 40 inch spacing option because as plants grow, they shade the space between the rows sooner. This shade protects soil moisture. At the base of each planting station, there are five main functions for this no-till setup. Number one, the ground cover in front of the row being planted is cleared away. This is important because you want to plant the seed in contact with the soil, not straw. Number two, a set of wheels open a seam into the ground. Number three, the seed is dropped into the ground at the set depth. Today, we are planting one and a half inches deep. This wheel rides along the ground and controls the planting depth. Number four, a set of closing wheels crimps the seam closed. This makes sure that the seed is covered by soil. Number five, an attachment shoots liquid fertilizer two inches deep and two inches away from the seed. Fertilizer is plant food, but too much, too close, can cause the seed to burn up. The moving parts of the planting mechanism have pressure controlled by pneumatic actuators. These actuators are supplied air from an onboard compressor. The closing wheel sections are also designed to articulate, allowing them to smoothly float over humps without disrupting the positioning on the opening wheels. Now that you've seen it up close, let's see it in action. We're going about seven miles per hour every second 
we are planting 250 seeds. Every two minutes, we are covering an acre of land, or about the size of a football field. My, gra my grandpa farmed with mules. Just plowing two acres took all day. This setup is opening, planting, covering, and fertilizing that much land every four minutes. Inside the cab, there are lots of things to help the operator. Grandpa would be super jealous of the air conditioning. But the technology goes way behind that. The tractor uses GPS to auto steer, keeping the planting lines perfectly straight. It also keeps track of what parts of the field has been planted. When we overlap an area that already has been seeded, the, the, the control system can shut off rows to keep it from being double seeded. All of the planting data is being mapped and stored. This data can be matched with yield data to identify problems and compare performance. There are also several monitoring systems to alert the operator to problems. It may look easy with the tractor and the computer system doing so much work, but it takes a smart operator to optimize the, the setup, make good decisions, correct problems, and set up the, the crop for success. Think of it this way, the setup is really fast. So if you are making a mistake, you are messing up a lot of ground or wasting a lot of inputs really fast too. Court says there are lots of things to consider when planting. Current soil moisture, soil temperatures, weather forecasts, planting dates, what land quality, sea varieties, and lots more. He is a fan of no-till farming, which means the land is left with plant cover when planted, instead of the traditional plowing before planting. The plant cover offers several advantages. It helps the soil retain moisture it stops erosion and breaks it up the breaks up and it breaks up the rainfall into a gentle mist hitting soil which helps more of it soak in rather than compacting the soil and running off in 4 or 5 days seedlings like this will emerge this cotton was planted and in plowed ground. With this good ground and detailed planting, the crop could yield three bales to acre or more. To get there, it will take lots more management, work, input, and luck, especially with the weather. But the success starts with good planting. Sometime around October, we will find out how the crop yield and quality turns out. Thank you, Mr. Court, for teaching me so much and letting me ride in the tractor. And, every, and for everybody else, thanks for watching.